Previously, you learned three ways to define the center of a distribution. The point at which a distribution would balance, the value whose average absolute difference from all other values is smallest, and the value whose average squared difference from all the other values is smallest. Now we're going to define the three most common measures of central tendency, the mean, median, and mode. The relationships between these measures of central tendency and the definition given previously will probably not be obvious to you. Rather than just tell you these relationships, we will allow you to discover them on your own. The arithmetic mean is the most frequently used and well-recognized measure of the center, center of a distribution. It's calculated by summing all the numbers in the group and then dividing that answer by the number of numbers. So in a population, the Greek letter mu represents arithmetic mean. In a sample, a capital M is used. Regardless of whether you are analyzing a sample or a population, the formula is the same. The Greek capital letter sigma followed by an x means to sum all of the numbers. You then divide by n the number of numbers. Although the arithmetic mean is not the only mean, there are several others, it is by far the most commonly used. Therefore, if the term mean is used alone, it's assumed to refer to the arithmetic mean. You also might hear the word average. As an example, imagine that 1, 2, 3, 6, and 8 three-point shots are made by the five starting players on a basketball team. What is the mean number of shots made? First, we're going to add all of the number of shots up we get a total of 20. Then we're gonna divide by the number of starting players, which is five. And that gives us a mean of four shots. The median is another common measure of central tendency. In general terms, it's the exact midpoint of a distribution, meaning that the same number of scores are above the median as below it. Another way of thinking about the median is that it represents the 50th percentile of a distribution. Let's imagine that in your class of 31 students, you score the 16th highest score in the class, say an 80. Your score is the median because 15 students received a score lower than 80 and 15 students received a score higher than 80. You are at the 50th percentile. The median is a relatively easy statistic to calculate. When there is an odd number of numbers in your distribution, the median is simply the middle number if you put the numbers in order from smallest to largest. For instance, the median of the numbers 2, 4, and 7 is 4. However, when there is an even number of numbers in the distribution, the median is calculated by taking the mean of the two middle numbers. So for instance, if a sample consists of four scores, two, four, seven, and 12, the median is the average of four and seven, which is 5.5. A third and final commonly used measure of central tendency is the mode. The mode is the most frequently occurring value in a sample or a population. You can have more than one mode, Imagine that you and nine other people play a hole of golf and make three scores, or make these scores. Because three is the most frequently occurring value, three is the mode. With continuous data measured to many decimal places, the frequency of each value is typically one, since the same score is rarely obtained more than once. For example, if you measure the time it took to make a response to a stimulus, no two times would be exactly the same. How do you calculate the mode when every score has a frequency of one? The solution to this problem is to compute the mode from a grouped frequency table. This table shows a grouped frequency distribution for response time data. The interval with the highest frequency is 600 to 700. 
So the mode is the middle of that interval, which is 650.